So let's begin with the COP26 summit. Uh, I'd ask you to open us up in our discussion with an assessment of what you think it's achieved so far on deforestation, on coal, on fossil fuels, and what it hasn't achieved. Give us a, a scorecard, if you would. Well, thank you for that opportunity. You know, the first two or three days of this uh, COP was uh, devoted to the presence of leaders. So state, heads of state, heads of government, heads of government. And now it is really up to negotiators to, to hammer out the concrete deals. But I left Glasgow, you know, quite hopeful because I had the sense that compared to Paris uh, in 2015 or Copenhagen in 2009, there was a seriousness about pledges, commitments, and what leaders brought to the table. Now, the commitments on cutting emissions, that is a national decision that you have to take according to Paris. And, and all countries need to sharpen those targets. We have done in this government, uh, committing to cutting 55% by 2030. Now, what happened in Glasgow was work on forests, where we need to protect forests, the rainforest, avoid the cutting down of trees, because it's a huge uh, importance to, to, to reach the climate goals that we protect these, these forests. That started 15 years ago with an international effort where we basically pay people not to cut down the forests. Now that has been much improved and I believe that in Glasgow we saw uh, concrete steps to make these institutional setups better so that we can protect more, more forests. Still work to be done to get the leading nations on board, but there is a financial mechanism coming up to uh, secure that in a better way. Secondly, there is progress on mobilizing finance so developing countries can go down the renewable road and not uh, go down the coal road, to put it that way. So uh, Norway, for its part, is committing to double our financial contribution, uh, which is going to fund renewable energy and also technology to, to put that in place. There too, there was progress. There was a significant methane pledge by the United States and the European Union and uh, uh, a, a lot of countries pledging to cut methane emissions. Methane is 80 times more powerful climate gas than CO2, but it remains in the atmosphere much fewer years. So cutting methane will really make a difference. So on these agendas and including also on ocean management, this is a, a particular importance to Norway and I'm chairing an, an ocean panel of leaders there is also commitment, you know, to, to, to make real progress on protecting the oceans, saving it from plastic, saving it from, from the effects of overfishing, and therefore also expecting more food and more jobs coming connected to the ocean. So on these accounts, I was hopeful. And what, what now needs to be done is that a lot of these agreements need to be hammered out in the, in the institutional setup. One big challenge is to count the emission cuts in a reliable way so that one ton reduced means one ton reduced and not double accounting. So we have to develop a whole new set of global rules to make uh, 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 global climate policy work. And that's a tall order and we have a short time and it's, it's urgent to succeed.